In this video, we're going to set up e-commerce tracking using Google Analytics. This is a kind of complex topic, but if you are an e-commerce website, your conversions are sales. And how do you do that? That's what we're going to solve in this video. My situation is very specific and niche. You might not be on WordPress. Um, if you're not, let me get to my first point. Go find a plugin that will implement Google Analytics e-commerce tracking for your website. And when you look for it, look for enhanced e-commerce. So we're going to dive in a little bit deeper to that. But for now, let me just explain the scenario. I'm on WordPress. I'm using a Google Tag Manager for WordPress plugin that allows me to implement e-commerce tracking. I'm using WooCommerce for my cart, and we're going to do this using Google Tag Manager. So definitely go look for a plugin, but my, my hope is for this video that you walk away with saying, okay, yeah, I know exactly what I'm gonna need to do, um, and I know exactly what it's supposed to look like. So hopefully you get that out of this. Let's get started. Um, first, in my situation, I'm going to go into plugins, going to activate, this Google Tag Manager for WordPress. Then I'm going to go into Settings. Now here, all it's asking for is the Google Tag Manager ID, which you can get from Google Tag Manager. So pull up Google Tag Manager and also pull up Google Analytics. Here is where we get the ID. We just copy that right here. Done. Paste it in here. Now for me, I'm going to use a custom installation for the NoScript. We already saw this in the previous video. Before I go and do that though, I also want to check one more thing. I have this integration tab in WooCommerce. Like I said, my cart system is WooCommerce. So I want to make sure that this track enhanced e-commerce checkbox is checked. Hit save. And you also notice here we had this classic e-commerce. That's the standard e-commerce if you wanted that. So with all that set, let's go, I already copied this thing here. Let's go into my themes header. We're going to edit after the body tag. And I already have it here. Just wanted you to see that it's there. Okay, so let's check out our site. Make sure Google Tag Manager is firing. Also make sure that Google Analytics is firing we see, for some reason we see, okay, so it showed yellow there, who knows why. So we have Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics implemented through Google Tag Manager. Now, what we need to do is look at the documentation. Let's talk about the difference real quick between standard and, and enhanced. Here's my opinion, take it for what it's worth. Standard e-commerce is for people that don't like being overwhelmed with too much data, too much information that they don't know how to make sense of. That's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with implementing standard e-commerce. However, what you miss out on is functionality and reporting later on. So you might start out with standard e-commerce and say, you know what, I really wish I would have implemented enhanced because it takes the exact same amount of time and effort. So why not implement the one with more functionality that you may find useful later on. So that's why we're gonna implement enhanced e-commerce, not standard e-commerce, but the process is the exact same. So we skip this part here. We're gonna go down here to enhanced e-commerce. And I'll just walk through the steps now. Here in Google Analytics, you wanna go into the admin section, find the view that you're going to implement e-commerce tracking in. Set up e-commerce here. This is the standard e-commerce, like we just talked about. If you just wanted standard e-commerce, you would just check that, hit save. But we want enhanced, so we're gonna do that and hit save. Okay. Now let's go into Google Tag Manager. And what we want to do is create a tag. Now in order to do what I'm about to do, you need to know the name of the event that will fire once a successful cart completion has been achieved. The way you can do that is create a fake 
cart completion. So go through your process, find out what that variable is, and then you're going to put it in your trigger. So we're going to go through that. Let's say this is an event, and I'm going to say this is an enhanced e-commerce event. For this, I'm going to say transaction. And then for this, I'm going to set to true because I don't want this affecting the bounce rate for this page. Then we have to set this Google Analytics variable that we defined earlier. And let's also call this, we're going to call it Google Analytics transaction, or GA for short. Now let's set up the trigger. We only want this really to fire when that event happens. So whenever there's an event, and I know the event name, the, the reason I know it is because I can look here. This is the plugins GitHub area. And if it was just a standard event, this would be the name, but it's not. It's an enhanced e-commerce event. So this is the name of it that fires into the data layer. So we want to grab that event and we want to, we can, so this event, it's not going to happen like when I visit my blog or something, it's going to happen on one very specific place. And it's only going to happen when somebody completes a checkout. So I don't really need to further validate it. I could, if I was really like, I want to make extra sure I could do this. And we'll do that just to, just to try it out. We're going to call this order received and then hit save. So we've created a trigger and that trigger is tied to this enhanced e-commerce event. Okay, so let's hit save. Now we have to modify those variables that we saw earlier, our, our specific Google Analytics setting variable. So we go here and then there's this more settings that's kind of hidden. What we want to do, and just so you know where I'm getting this, like how do I, do I just know this from experience? It's actually right in the Google documentation. So this is what we're looking at. We want to uh, go into the more settings, e-commerce, set enabled enhanced e-commerce features to true, and then use the data layer. A lot of people, they, they seem to like, they pretend like they just know this because they just are pros. No, it's in the documentation. So let's not fool anyone. Um, let's check that too. While I'm here, I might as well. I know I'm going to do that later. And that's it. We wanted to update that variable, and we did. Hit save. All right, so the only thing left is to put our site into preview mode. Let's go to our website. Refresh. Now, we're not going to see anything different here other than, you know, we see this GA transaction, enhanced e-commerce event. Okay, let's create a checkout. Here I'm going to add two of these. Add to cart. We're going to go to view cart. Proceed to checkout. We are paying. Okay, so it's the moment of truth. I'll click return to merchant. So this is the page. Notice the URL. Order received, checkout slash order received. So that's why we further qualify that. And we notice that the GA transaction event did fire. Now it's important to also look at the name of it. This is what I mean by the name of the event. I got this from here. So if you're not on WordPress, you're not using this specific um, you know, platform or plugin, you're going to need to know the event that fires when the data layer fires. Okay. So this is pretty cool. Um, let's just check this out. Let's click here, open this up. We can see green checkboxes next to those events. So those both were true, basically. Now let's look at the data layer. So it has, and I, I added two items to my cart of that same product here, just so you could see quantity is two for this other product. So that's pretty cool. It all came in. So we go to real time. 
we say events in Google Analytics, we should see an event that happened. And we do. So, I mean, there, let's, let's click this. So this was an enhanced e-commerce. It was a transaction. So that's pretty much it. Um, obviously, the next thing to, to do would be leave preview mode and publish this. But this, this stuff here is very complicated. Don't feel bad for not knowing this. In the next video, we're going to show you how to actually tell your developer how to do this or how you can do it yourself if you know a little bit about the language that your templates and your system are written in.